Welcome, welcome everyone to today's episode of Conversational Witchcraft with me, Dawn the Kitchen Witch. Before we get going, uh, please remember to like and subscribe um, because we love what we do and we love doing it for you. So now you can support us uh, by supporting this podcast. So you can check out the support link and you can also learn more about me and Kitchen Witchcraft and my books at kuchinaaurora.com and also find the links to all these other podcasts there. So make sure you like, subscribe, support our podcast, and go check out kuchinaaurora.com. On today's show, I'm very, very excited um, because we have someone here who's going to talk directly to my heart as a business owner, which we don't talk about a lot on this show. Today, we are talking with Shakti Sharma. Shakti is an intuitive business coach supporting light workers and healers to hone in on their soul business leadership. She specializes in guiding soulful entrepreneurs away from burnout and toward a path of ease and empowerment. With her proven three-step process, she can help them elevate their business intuition, amplify their impact and income, and boost their influence. Her mission is to empower healers to confidently step into their roles as visionary leaders. This passion is helping others become highly visible in their authenticity so that they get paid and celebrated for their unique gifts. Shakti, welcome, (laughs) welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for having me here, Don. What a joy, what an honor to sit in front of you in this way and to get to know you and to share my heart with you today. I am so excited. A little backstory, Shakti, I met through her husband who used to be my old yoga teacher. Um, And you guys just, everything you do both uh, together in your your spiritual life and, and in your business life is this empowerment. And when I learned about what you're doing, uh, specifically for entrepreneurs like myself, I was like, we have to have this conversation because I don't think people are talking about it. So before we get into what you do, I want to know how you got into helping people align their businesses with their spiritual practice. So start with like you as a kid, like finding your own spiritual path. Like how did, how did you get here? Like talk to us about your journey a little bit. Wow. Okay. Where do I begin? I think it all started with me wanting to be born. And oh my God. And I chose my mother and her lineage of all the sensitive empaths and healers Mm. who had no idea that they were empaths and healers and so sensitive. And I chose my father who comes from a whole lineage of business people. Wow businessmen. And my parents were trying so hard to have a baby. Um, They tried for eight years and they went through multiple miscarriages and a stillbirth. Mm. And I was born. um, I I was conceived and they did not know whether I will be born alive because they had lost my brother before me who was born, had a stillbirth, um, full term baby just came out not alive. So my journey began in the womb, uh, constantly being in the fear of death, in the fear of death, because wow. it wasn't really the conception wasn't celebrated. My birth wasn't as celebrated. And I felt like a part of me, a big part of me was suppressed from the get go. And a big part of me lived her life in a state of shutdown. So that is where my journey started. And throughout my life, I had these thoughts of suicides and giving up and I don't want to be here. And I wasn't sure what was causing this until many, many decades later, I started on my healing journey and realized, oh my goodness, a lot of this is the fetal birth trauma that I've been carrying with me. And 
every time we have pain, every time we have trauma, we attract more trauma, more pain in our life. And until you stop and pause and understand what the heck is going on, everything can in life can be can feel very chaotic and heavy. So my journey really started from with within this pursuit of finding my aliveness. Like why, what wow. makes me alive? What makes me want to sing? What makes me want to love? What makes me want to dance? What makes me want to just come open up in this full body expression of aliveness? I am here on earth. And that is really what got me started on the path of healing. So Wow. Wow. <laughs> can, can, okay. You just said so much and, and, uh, and it's amazing. I want to dig into it a little bit. If we can, you started saying my journey began when I chose my mother and father. This is a concept that I don't think a lot of people understand is that your spirit is infinite. At least this is my interpretation is that our spirits are infinite and whatever the experiences we have, we chose to come into the world at this time, at this point that that little spirit knows. Now, I would like to preface that with, if you grew up in an abusive situation and bad things happened to you, it doesn't mean it's your fault. It's that spirit knew you had to learn something or that perhaps you were the lesson that someone else had to learn. So we're not placing blame and saying, you know, horrible things happened. It was your fault. However, spirit understands something and chooses these experiences in a physical form. Is that what you mean when you say, I chose my parents? Yes. So let me clarify. There's a whole big wave of oneness coming in on earth. The way we have perceived life is now shifting. Mm -hmm. And up until this point, and I'm just marking this point for all of the listeners here engaging in this conversation, hearing this, up until this point, it has always been about somebody did something to me. Mm. I am the victim of my circumstances. I am the recipient of somebody's, you know, Voices. action, yeah. choices. I have been the one suffering, right? And the shift that I want to invite everyone, all of us to make is I am the soul. I am the creator of my reality. Mm -hmm. I have created the right setups for me mm -hmm. to go into these situations that created pressure for me to really hone in, to really step into the bigness of my power so I can move forward being one with the fullness of me, being one with my power, being one with my intelligence. And that is really the path that is available to us. I agree a hundred percent. And I do think that um, that getting to that point within ourselves, re that realization takes those traumas, takes those experiences and takes choice. I choose to, even though I may have been a victim of something bad uh, or have been victimized by something bad, I am not a victim because I choose how I move through this, this hardship, or I choose how I move through this situation. So it sounds like to me from, because of the trauma of your parents and, and the energy that was held around pregnancy, birth, um, and, and you coming in, you know, those poor people living in fear we don't want to get excited about the baby. We, we don't want to get, because anything could, bad could happen. And so we're, and that a lot of us live like that, right? That we live in that fear that that held on to you, that energy held on to you throughout early childhood, maybe into your teens. At what point did you choose to say, I am not this, I am not this negativity. I am not 
a victim to this energy. I see it. I recognize it. And I move beyond it. How did you get through that? It's been a journey. And um, it's been a journey of uh, kind of aligning myself with this evolution. And it's it's really, let's say, if I I had to take, you know, the journey from point A to Z, it's been point B and C and D and E. All of that has like opened up. A lot of questioning has opened up. And one thing that really helped me is really settling with the belief, aligning with the belief that everything is happening with me. Everything is happening for me. And how can I find, even if I am feeling like a victim right now, how can I align to a greater wisdom here that helps me see this as a perfect setup to really propel me forward in my power? So for example, like this morning, and it's all random occurrences that are coming together through this conversation, because I had no idea you're going to be asking me about this. But the intelligence that came forward is that is that there's a reason why miscarriages happen. There's a reason why still births happen. And that reason is that sometimes family lines need to come in balance, in alignment before a new living baby is born. Mm. And the way family line adjusts is to send souls who can help come in for a certain period of time during that uh, gestation period and clear the family karma out so that the next baby who's going to come can be a living baby that can help the family line move forward. Right, right. So I did not know this for the longest time, but I now know this because I was curious to ask question how, what is that greater clarity? What is that greater wisdom that can allow me to see this situation as the situation where I am being called in my empowerment here? I think that's a really amazing uh, way of looking at things and understand. I, I think that all starts with that self awareness. Um, you know, for the longest time, and I think a lot of people will resonate with that message. I, I have some, you know, family drama, family trauma, right? Disconnection. Um, you know, I don't know a lot about uh, about my ancestral heritage. I know a little, but very, very little bit. Um, and there is um, discord in the line of, you know, family. And for the longest time, I thought, I don't belong with them. I don't belong with them. What is my, I don't, I don't fit. I don't fit. I, I need to pull away. I don't, you know, why am I here? Why, why was I put in this family? Like, ugh, I just don't work. And then I realized the reasons for that were I needed to have my father, right? I'm grateful for this crazy pants, all this stuff over here, because what I learned was this person, these experiences, I'm meant to be like him. I'm meant to take those lessons with me. You know, um, I'm going to just pause that thought for a second and signal to my partner that he can come in, uh, cause he's walking through the house right now. And this is why it's great that we have a producer because he can chop all this out and we can get right back into the, the juicy bits. Um, and you can, I don't know if you can hear the door opening. But you can, you're fine, honey. You can come in. Corey can, can chop that out. Okay. Um, but it, it, back to what you were saying, this idea of purpose and finding purpose within trauma, right? Again, not saying trauma is okay. Not saying this is a, you know, that you deserve bad things, but finding purpose within it and the blessings that weave through it. Right. Yeah. 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 I, I feel like just on earth, we're moving through a really big up leveling in our empowerment. And I am seeing almost like in the next five years, we can proudly talk about our traumas and normalize it and 
acknowledge everybody has trauma, like everybody, 8 billion people on the planet have trauma, family discord, all kinds of marital issues, all kinds of stuff come up. And that stuff is so important because if we don't have that stuff, we can propel ourselves forward in our growth and understanding of who we truly are. So I, I am definitely seeing a world where it's all going to come into such powerful, big, deep light that will make us more free, more free to be who we are. Can you pinpoint a time in your life or tell us a story about a time in your life where you felt that empowerment, where you were like, I'm in the middle of something horrible and I can really see the light or the blessing, or I am making that choice to change my mindset. Could you give us an example of that for you in your life? I think this is every day's work. It's not like one one example, one story I can highlight, but the smartest thing I have done ever done is, okay, so maybe I can share actually a story. Um, sorry for my choppy thoughts here. I love but, it. So back in 2014, I went through a massive spiritual awakening. And what happened on that day, it, it was like February time frame in 2014. And I had just finished my business school, my got in my MBA degree. I had already started my management consulting job at, at Accenture. And um, I was married to Mitesh. And I was also pregnant at the same time. Um, you know, all of this was happening. I was pregnant with my first baby, my baby boy, Priam. And there's like a lot happening and something happened. We had a guest visiting us at that time and something just hurt me. And, and this hurt was very lingering in my heart. Um, I just felt a moment of uh, insecurity. I have, I've always been a very insecure woman. And, you know, especially when it comes to love and relationship, I had a former partner who cheated on me. Um, <laughs> there's like a whole history there. And something just happened in that moment. And, you know, all the pregnancy hormones were raging. And I'm like, yeah. okay, I cannot take this. And I actually left our home. We lived in Chicago downtown. I walked out. It was five in the morning. I packed a few clothes, walked out, you know, found a hotel, checked myself in, and something moved. I just had all the permission in in that moment to just cry. Mm to let all the floodgates open and have like the biggest cathartic, you know, cry of my whole life. And in that moment, it really felt like a voice inside me was activated. I could hear a part of me speaking to me, look Shakti, you have been so sensitive and you have been feeling a lot all your life and you have done your very best, try to hold it all together. Now you can just let go. Now you can just let go, let it all flow. And that voice showed me how I have been in pain throughout my childhood. And I've seen other women in pain in relationships and how these are some of the old patterns that have been repeating. And it's not a partner it's not somebody outside. The common thread is you. Mm. And in that right. moment, voice also taught me, spoke to me, go learn intuition, learn the art, learn to know yourself. Wow. And I don't know, it really felt like this moment was the first time God was speaking to me and that God lived in me. And I was like, okay, um, how do you rationalize this? A woman who's an engineer, who's like gone to Carnegie Mellon for her, you know, for her master's, for her, her MBA, went to University of Chicago, worked at JP Morgan Chase, and now working at Accenture. How do you rationalize going to a psychic school and learning about intuition? You can't. But it's one of those moments where you, everything defies logic and you just have to follow 
what the inner voice says to do. Wow. And that is it. And since then, I have, you know, spent a whole decade learning about energy, learning about intuition, learning to channel and really honing in that voice within me. And that voice has been with me every day of my life. And it is such a powerful, powerful gift to activate because I could go into these moments and feel anxious as hell and, you know, feel so triggered. And yes, in that moment, I will breathe and get myself cooled down and get into a space of relaxation. But when I start asking these questions, why am I suffering? There's always a voice telling me what is really happening and how I can shift it and turn it around in a way that the the situation actually leaves me more empowered than leaves me feeling like a victim who's always suffering. That is incredible. And I love the way you put it as it was the first time I let go and could actually hear the voice of God, you know, like I love, because I think our own interpretations of that are, we all have that, the higher self, the universal intelligence, whatever it is that's filtering through Sometimes we have to break down to break open, to receive message, whether it is divine power, whether it is spirit guides, whether it is ancestors, whatever you call that, or however it's filtering through, we all have to get to a point where we break open to have those messages come through. And I'll give you an example just today. A friend of mine who lost a parent, she lost her mother a few months back, um, you know, she's been dealing in her own way and she's like, oh, I'm good. I'm fine. Everything's okay. Everything's okay. And then she had for the first time since losing her mom, she had a dream about her mom, which was clearly not a dream. It was actually like the spirit of her mother visiting her, you know? And I was like, well, yeah, it makes sense that it's happening now because you're finally at a point where you're breaking open, feeling sorrow, feeling your feelings, allowing yourself to open up to things that are more than the logic, as you put it, the engineering, the, the science, the, the well, meticulousness of, well, this is what the concrete things of life are, but there's so much more out there. So allowing yourself to break open and receive message is transformative. Would you agree? Very, very much so, because in these moments, we realize we are more than the sufferer or the victim in a moment. We are more than that. And if there is a voice coming through us, we must be that voice. We must be that intelligence. We must be that source. And that is so liberating, just getting to that clarity in the moment, just like liberates you from having to be pinned in a corner and suffer all your life. Yeah. To carry that around with you. You don't, you can choose, you can choose. Am I going to carry this garbage with me or am I going to open myself up to these other experiences and this, this, as you spiritual alignment, spiritual awakening. It's what you do, right? I mean, wow, that's incredible. And I just, because again, I know it's, it's off topic, but that you had this epiphany while you were pregnant with your first child and knowing the story of your own birth, did you see those parallels there? And did you actively choose to get excited about the pregnancy and excited about the birth? Oh, I was very excited. Um, Very excited. Uh, Yeah, I was, I was very excited. It wasn't the excitement that was the issue, but in which form I was celebrating that excitement changed. So I had a boy and I was holding masculine energy in my body and it activated the masculine side of me. And, you know, my boy is exactly like that. He is a fast thinker. He does a lot. Um, He is, he's just very excited, energetic, uh, just full of energy. And the way he giggles and laughs, it can light up the whole room. Um, 
And at that point, it's a sole partnership between two beings coming together. So in that part of my life, I was expressing excitement in a way that we co-created, which was I was, you know, graduating from my business school and I was interviewing for 40 different top companies in the world. I had this job that I really wanted, management consulting. I was traveling all over the United States every single week. Um, I was, I, besides the work travel, Mitash and I were traveling, my husband and I were traveling all over the world as well. So it, it excitement is always there. It was expressed in a way that honored our soul level agreement and co-creation together. Wow, that's so beautiful to be able to express that and and to have been able to be really in that moment and be so present. Um, you're you you're very very present. Um, can we just talk about that for a second? Because as we start getting into what the work you actually do, one of the challenges as human beings. Um, is to be present now here in this moment and in the feeling that we're feeling right now. Is there a, a is there a trick to it for you? Is there a, 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 again, how did you start becoming so present in your emotion, in your spiritual self? Did it all start with this breakthrough moment? And then you're, you're delving into the spiritual side of things. And, and are there any tips for being present in the moment that you use all the time to remain so? Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's hard to say if it's like one story or one moment. Um, I can tell you when my husband and I first met him being a yoga teacher, we were just like, you know, uh, holding each other in an embrace and, you know, I thought a guy would like compliment me about my figure and how, you know, attractive I look. And he goes, I noticed that you breathe in a very shallow way. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Okay. I, think, I think that was the first moment I started becoming aware of my breath. And since then, my breath has completely shifted. <laughs> That's, I feel like I can hear him saying that, like, it's very nice to meet you. I noticed you tend to hold your breath. Yeah. Like, thanks for that. I said, no. uh, you have nice eyes. I don't, how do you respond to that? You're not one of the guys I have ever dated before, <laughs> but okay. Thanks. Um, <laughs> so it, it's, I think for me, the biggest part is that me coming to realization how suppressed my feminine energy was oh. and how little I had space in my body, in my inner psyche to be able to breathe, to be able to feel. And, you know, I, I actually stopped feeling for the longest time in my life because how could I feel? If I started feeling, I would be grieving all the losses my mother had right? Yeah. Everything yes. we, so the womb time is the most important time of our life because our subconscious mind is starting to develop and everything our parents are feeling are the same feelings we keep feeling all our life. Everything that is happening in our world is a repetition of what has transpired during that womb, that childhood time in our whole life. Wow. I so, never thought about it that way before. Yes, it, it all started there. The root of everything we're experiencing have been laid in that womb gestation period because that is the energy our subconscious mind is still holding to this day, to this moment. Wow. Yes. Wow. So how do we break through that? How do, how do we let go of that? You, uh, all of us, actually, I think giving ourselves permission to feel is a big one. And the more you can allow yourself to feel and be 
neutral to all feelings, simply using them as a way of understanding what is there in the subconscious mind is going to be really powerful. And that feeds into how present you are, like how you were asking Don the previous question. The, the presence is simply you're here in this moment and taking that internal stock of how you're feeling. Instead of pushing any mental agenda, when you come pull all the energy into that awareness, how am I feeling? Your presence begin to deepen. Yes. I see that. And there was something you just said about for years, you didn't allow yourself to feel because yeah. as a woman, how could you then, if you started feeling one, it would be like dominoes, right? The next one and the next one and the next one. And all that feeling from the womb energy is going to come back to you in your own experiences. I think that's something many women relate to is that when we, well, we get, we get called out for feeling too much. We get called out for being too sensitive. You know, we get, um, ostracized for being too emotional. Um, and, and that feeling can often be, or that, that deep emotion that we feel, and that's not just for women. I think that's across the board, right. Um, can make us be vulnerable. And that vulnerability can make us go back to feeling that we could be a victim, right? So, but the truth is once we crack open and allow those feelings in and allow ourselves to be present in those feelings, we now are much stronger because we have a deeper understanding of why, how, where, when we are at this moment. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. I think... I think it is very present in our whole world, this judgment about feeling. And I will tell you that as women and even as men, as human beings, one of our superpowers is actually our ability to feel. Yes. Because our feelings are almost a barometer of where the subconscious mind is. And once we know, number one, what that feeling is, and we're willing to feel it, allow ourselves to feel it. And number three, then ask ourselves, if I am the creator of my reality, what is the bigger purpose? Why would I have created this? Where yes. is that power? So what we're doing in this space, we are really connecting the womb, the cervix, the root chakra, the sacrum chakra, all the way to this neutral third eye point that allows us to create a perspective that is whole. Wow, I love that, that so much. That doesn't leave us in a split of I am separate. It brings us back to that neutral reason why there's a bigger, broader reason of how we feel. And, and what can we do now to step into more of that oneness with ourselves? And that idea of I am the creator of my own world. I often, when I'm having moments of insecurity or I'm having moments of fear, remind myself, I am in control of my thoughts. I am in control of what I create in this world. If my outer world is a reflection of my inner world, which means I then have to heal what's inside so that my outer world reflects the heal, the healing, the healthy, the joyful, not the fear, the anxiety, the, the discontent or the insecurity, right? We are in control of that and that oneness and that presence of mind and that presence of spirit is exactly what you're talking about. And, and it all begins in that sacral, you know, you know, uh, uh, root chakra area, and then we're able to hold it in our minds. That's just amazing. All right. We've got to take a quick break. We have to hear from our sponsors. When we come back, 
I want to get a little deeper into how this can be applied to entrepreneurs. Um, and I want to talk to you about the journey of being an entrepreneur in a spiritual way, because obviously it's near and dear to my heart. So we'll be right back. We're going to hear from our sponsors. Uh, we'll be right back. We are back with Shakti Sharma, uh, talking about alignment and understanding and healing trauma and womb trauma and just like blowing my mind wide open, which is so freaking amazing. Okay. So most of you know out there, um, and you of course know Shakti that I am an entrepreneur. I am a business person and my business Kachina Aurora Kitchen Witchery is, it's a soul project, right? It's based off of my spiritual beliefs of, you know, cooking with intention and sharing love and connecting with people through food. Um, it is as much my business and me being an entrepreneur, as much as a part of my identity as the fact that I, you know, am a kitchen witch or the fact that I have brown eyes, like it is part of my being and has definitely, I've definitely realized that it is very much a spiritual calling. I have never in all of my years had anyone, um, have a conversation with me that understood that, um, in the way that you understand that. So talk to us a little bit about how you see entrepreneurship as a spiritual path and, and how you came to realize that. I think entrepreneurship is, is a spiritual path and actually one of not so easy paths to take uh, because we're constantly, <clears throat> we're, we are entrepreneurs because of two main reasons. One is we have inspiration of what makes us happy. We have passion for something we deeply care about. And secondly, we want freedom. Freedom of being ourselves, freedom to create, freedom to have flexibility with time and money and all kinds of other components. And if you look at kind of spirituality, you know, the feminine aspect of spirituality, which is connect to your intuition, connect to your uh, inspiration, connect to your heart. And that is really what feeds into the passion that we, you know, hone in and leverage in our entrepreneurship. And the other part is the safety, the freedom, the masculine side, the masculine gifts that we activate using spirituality really connects to uh, those other dimensions of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is not easy and it's not ever going to feel easy. Oh, really? Never? <laughs> I mean, we can get no, better. You're right. You're right. You're hundred percent right. We can get better at this. But it is this whole aspect of unplugging from the matrix, unplugging from the system, unplugging from the safety of, you know, here's your salary and you get, you take it home and pay your mortgage and you know where that money is going, right? And every month there's a safety blanket that is provided to you in that system. And now once you step out of the system, a lot of things are gonna be tested. But these tests, these events, these situations are exactly what is going to help you to hone in more on that passion, the number one reason, the inspiration why you actually started your business. And that becomes the path of <clears throat> creating a brand, creating services, creating products that really serve people from your heart. So it it is one of those um, paths that really allow you to trust yourself in the biggest possible way. And the more you step into that trust, the more invincible you get to feel. And if you think about it, what we just talked about before, it is really why, why are we spiritual is because we're seeking that empowerment. Why are we entrepreneurs? Because we're seeking empowerment in both equations, the objective is similar we have lived in a world for the longest time where we have been divided yeah. here are the spiritual people here are the material 
you know, people who, who wanted money and success and, and want to have, you know, a four bedroom house in a good community and all that. Right. And where we are moving as a collective in a place where all of this comes together, like my, my, um, ancestors, uh, were also intuitive and they tried to create businesses back in the days and they were not very successful in that. Or my other ancestors, other group of ancestors were trying to do business and they could only do business, but that had no connection with their hearts and souls whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And now the opportunity here, the big wave that we are riding is to combine the both together because there's one thing that spiritual people know really well how to do they know how to step out of the fear they know how to turn turn around their belief systems they know how to really step into their heart yes and that is the key for entrepreneurship because the more you are in your heart the more you can align with the passion the purpose that really wants to move forward through the business you are creating for the world And I, I, all of that, all of that is just, yes, yes, a thousand percent. Yes. Um, and I think too, specifically, like, again, these principles apply to everyone, but as female entrepreneurs, as women having the experience of, uh, of, of being a woman and then taking the experience of being a woman and being a woman in business, um, we do lead with our hearts. We do lead with our intuition. And there are challenges of questioning. There are challenges of, or, or, or a conception, a societal conception of, well, you can't be a successful entrepreneur because you're a woman, because you're too sensitive, because you communicate too much, because you're too emotional, because, oh, or, or, you know, oh, honey, you think you can run a business? Oh, isn't she cute? I mean, I get that from other women. I get that from like, like, my mother who will be like, how's your little company, you know? And I'm like my lip, you know, this, this idea of your poo pooed because our ability is questioned or our, 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 our problem solving and not being, you know, it's so feeling like that's supposed to be so masculine and that you have to mind for business and you don't have that because a woman is minded for emotion. Um, but to your point, we are the creators. We yes. are passionate. We are spiritual. And then we use our masculine energy to push forward in those other areas, right? Are are these challenges that you have found as an entrepreneur mm-hmm. yourself and All the with time. your clients? All the time. So I I think it would be really nice to talk about this in detail because I want to just this is all what I have learned so far. And and if it helps someone, I'm happy to just share more about this. I want you to understand there are two types of people in the world, only two types of people. One who are really supporting you and they're growing with you. Yeah. And one who are learning from you but they're in resistance to their growth. It, say this again, two types of people. One, who are growing with you and riding every wave with you. Yes. And they're supporting and, you. Yes. And the other? Other are learning from you, but they are resisting their growth. Resisting their own growth. So those people might look like I love being around you. I'm your friend. I support you. Hey, good for you. I'm cheerleading you. Mm -hmm. And these are your clients. Mm -hmm. These are people who are buying your products. These are people who are like, wow, look at her, what she's doing. Like, I'm so inspired. Mm -hmm. Your friends, the people who are in resistance to the growth, they're learning from you from a distance, but they're in resistance to your growth are the ones you have manifested as your family. Oh. Yes. Oh, wow. And 
Yeah, the family line holds energetic polarity. That means if one of them, if one of you is very heart centered, driven by passion, inspired, making your dream comes true, there is always another person, a mom, a dad, who is really living a life of disconnection from heart, completely driven by logic in that rat race of winning on the point of money. It always happens. Wow. Always. Now, <clears throat> you want to hear from these people. You want to acknowledge that they're growing. You want to acknowledge that there's some resistance here, but you don't want to try to change them. No. You want to say, thank you. And you want to move back to these people who are here to support you. Because these people will come around with time. All they need is seeing you as an example of a successful, soulful entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You can't speed up their growth. You can't change them. You can't, any expectations are going to just hurt you more. You just have to <clears throat> give them a lot of space. You don't have to convince them of anything. You don't have to prove your worth to them. Mm -hmm. You just want to say, thank you. Mm -hmm. And you want to turn around and move to these people mm -hmm. who are here to grow with you. And, and if those other people don't ever get on the bandwagon, that's okay. Thank you for the lessons you're teaching me. Thank you for being the example of who I don't want to be around and go back to those people that really love, support, encourage. Yes. And I don't want to, I don't want to promote the cancel culture here, you know, by saying, I don't want to be around you. It is that they are in a different headspace that they yeah. can't see you just yet. Yeah. And it will be time in, in your life where things will turn, turn around. Nothing, nothing stays just like that forever. Yeah. You know, yeah. everything changes. That is the law of nature. This is how we evolve. It's just in the moment, they just need space to feel validated in their stubbornness, stuckness, whatever you want to call yeah. their resistance. And the more you give them space, the softer their resistance is going to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the more easier they will find to align with the new growth that you're embarking on. Sure. Sure. I, I agree with that a hundred percent. And I would, I would challenge the thought and I'm not saying canceling people, but I'm saying there are going to be some people and there have been for me on my journey that it's okay to evolve beyond. It's okay to grow out of, and it's okay to stop seeking approval. Mm -hmm. Right. And saying it, it is all right. If you are one of these people who is, I love the way you put it shocked you when you said these people are resisting their own growth. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so I can, I can love you and appreciate uh, who you are in your own journey. Um, but I can also choose to say, I love you. And I hold you in, in compassion and, and understanding, but you don't need to be in my world. No, you're right. And you know, there are points where our mental health, emotional health becomes so important. And in, in those points, if you need to take a break and get some space to care for you more, it's completely okay to do that. Absolutely. Abs I love how you put it about those people who are learning from you from a distance, but not able to but are resisting their own personal growth. And I could think off the top of my head, five people in my life. That are like that, <laughs> right. Like the, like, wow. And they said, they're like, yeah, man, you're great, but mm, that's not for me. You know? And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. But so, so, so interesting. Don, um, only five people. How did you manage that? No, well, I've done a lot of this pulling <laughs> away to be fair, you know, like those people that are, um, that are, and, and I think that has been a challenge in my life is to realize I don't need to be everything for everyone. And the only person's expectations that I need to meet are my own, right? As a woman, as a friend, uh, as, as an entrepreneur, it is my expectations that are important. And I am not here to be 
the version of myself for anyone else. Absolutely. And that goes to your point of entrepreneurs being um, that soul purpose, that soul journey and saying, I am pulling away from the safety of establishment and allowing Mm -hmm. myself to be who I am and use that to make a living Mm -hmm. and use that to provide a space, a workspace for other people who feel the same way. That I think is the gift of being able to be a soulful, soul-led entrepreneur and build a business around that, which I think is the gift that you have to point out to people that it can be done. You can do both. It, It can be done because, you know, because when we are spiritual, the reason we are spiritual, the reason we spir- we are spiritual is because we experience pain in our life. Let's just be honest about that. Mm, we are yeah. because it's in fashion, because it's in style and everybody's doing it. That's not the reason why we are spiritual. That spirituality doesn't stick around. The reason, the core reason why we are spiritual is because we have experienced pain. We have awareness of that pain. And we are wanting to ascend from that pain. Wow. You are, yes, yes. And that is a distinctly human trait. It is. It is distinctly human trait, yet not everybody has the awareness of their pain. You know, some people are blocked by their mind because they don't have the safety to be able to feel anything. Like I was for the you know, majority of my life. Right. So, right. Right. Wow. Yes. So, <laughs> so the reason we are spiritual is because we really went on this path of seeking unconditional love. We went on this path of seeking abundance, mm. went on this path of seeking empowerment and abundance is not just the bliss that we get, we get from being out of our body or meditating an hour or being in a sound healing session for 30 minutes. Abundance has a form called money. It has form of resources and support. And if we have really learned the art of seeking all these three things, right? The unconditional love, the empowerment, the abundance, There's no reason why we can't use the experiences of what we have experienced in our spiritual states and create it in our businesses. Yes. Again, we we manifest our, our outer world is a reflection of our inner world, right? Everything we create, we control is within us right now. So to have abundance in our lives in the form of, right? I remember going to a a, a ritual, um, a pagan ritual in honor of the goddess Akate a bunch of years ago, um, maybe even over 10 years ago at this point, and asking the priestess for divination, for, for help, for that kind of messaging, right? And saying, you know, when will I be, when will the abundance, when will I find the abundance? When will I be rich? When will I, when will these things happen? And she looked at me and she's like, but you already have them. You already are. Your life is filled with abundance. It's as abundant love and abundant understanding and abundant creation and abundant blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, but why I can't pay my bills, you know? <laughs> and then realizing that all of that is made up of the same stuff. Right. And if I can manifest this and this and this to have the form of energy come in the way of money, financial freedom. And, and as you said, that, that the form being monetary, we can do that as well in our businesses because we've already done it in our spiritual way, in our spiritual life. Right. So the game is slightly different. Mm -hmm. Same principles. One, we are using to connect with our spirit and finding these three things using the spirit. And that is a very out-of-body type experience. In 
business that exists on the physical plane, now you have to kind of train your body to experience these things yes. in the and guess what, where that pain is that led us to spirituality in the first place, that wow. pain in the body. So when you take, when you walk on the path of entrepreneurship as a spiritual man or a woman, you actually deepen your spirituality, not just from the perspective of connecting with the soul and experiencing these beautiful you know, feelings there, but you actually start to bring it all in the body to create embodiment of your soul. Wow. You're blowing my mind. You're blowing my mind. Again, I have never spoken to someone that understood my experience of being an entrepreneur in the way that you do. So I need to thank you for that. Deeply, deeply thank you for that because when I try to explain how much it's my business is a part of me, no one gets that. So <laughs> thank you so much for seeing that. And there's so many people like me out there that are are having these experiences and building companies and building um, lives in this way. And for you to be able to to pinpoint that is amazing. Um, and the fact that you are taking this concept and helping other people to do it in their own lives is absolutely unbelievable. I, I mean, really, really. How how can you how can people find you and reach out to you, Shakti, and learn from you in this way? Where can we find you? Yes, uh, you can find me on Facebook. Um, uh, I can drop a link somewhere, I guess, uh, but I can be found on Facebook, Instagram, and I am really excited to start my new program called Soul Led Leadership. And this is where <laughs> we are going to create a mastermind together of spiritual leaders and entrepreneurs to come together, spend time in creating that embodiment in your body, really bring that wisdom and light back in the body. And from there, create the strategy for your business. And, and I do my very best, you know, our brains are different. If we're spiritual people, our brains are wired differently. And I do my very best to, um, make this complex kind of pursuit of creating a thriving business into very easy digestible concepts that connect back to the energy, connect back to your spirituality and help you kind of create your unique story, your unique offering in the world, your unique pro program. And my promise to you and all participants is to that you will get to create a six figures business when you work with me. That's unbelievable. Shakti Sharma, you've blown my mind today, wide open. And I'm so grateful that you spent this time with us. And thank you for sharing all of your personal stories and, and how you got to where you are. I think that's going to resonate with a lot of people. Um, we will have all of your links on the show notes so people will be able to find you. Um, and you can always reach out to me at kachinaaurora.com and find uh, more information about Shakti and, and her work. Um, Shakti, before I let you go, I've got to ask you my one signature question that I ask to everybody that comes on the show. Um, and it has literally nothing to do with any of the deep stuff we've been talking about. It's just a fun question. Okay. You ready? If you could have me cook you one magical meal, what would it be and why? Oh, I don't know, but I am being drawn to ravioli, uh, ravioli and lasagna. I don't know why. There's something Italian that pulls me towards you. It's me. It's me. I'm the Italian. Are you Italian? I was going to ask you, do you have Italian roots? A hundred percent. All of it is all. To, and in fact, right now I have a giant pot of uh, beef ragu on my stove and I'm <laughs> having that for dinner tonight. So, uh, yes, <laughs> yes. Oh. I, 
Absolutely. I would make, I would make you a beautiful vegetable lasagna. I would love that. Okay. John, I, I am feeling just a lot of the beauty that you hold in your heart. And I, I feel that it all translates from your hands into the dishes that you make. And these are very potions like tonics. You get to like eat and bring in all the food in your body and up level. So I just want to say thank you for doing what you do, for following your passion against all odds, for keeping with it for years after years, going for it, keeping continue this growth forward and for creating this platform where we can all be just honest and vulnerable and share our rawest truth because there are not too many spaces in the world. We still need so many more spaces where people can come together and feel connected and feel celebrated. So thank you so much, sister, for all that you do, for holding this fort high and strong for all of us in the spiritual community. Thank you so much, Shakti. It's just been such a pleasure to chat with you today. I'm so grateful that you decided to join us. Um, I know everybody's going to really love everything that we talked about today. And um, I just feel uh, lighter and brighter for having spent this last hour with you. So thank you so, so much. And until next time, everyone, I wish you so many blessings and so much gratitude. Thank you all so much for being here today.